On-the-scene video coverage of ESC 2012 is supported by Prodexa. Welcome back. We're here at the European Society of Cardiology meeting in, in Munich. And one of the interesting trials, Chris, that was presented dealt with the mitral clip. Yes, this was another one of the registries that presented at the so-called late-breaking clinical trial session, uh, but a large one of 560 uh, patients with severe mitral regurgitation, 85% of them had uh, class 3 or 4 heart failure, and use of the mitral clip got three-quarters of them down to class 1 or 2 heart failure, S similar reductions in the mitral valve score, et cetera. So the, the clip seemed to really do its job. Of course, this isn't available in the United States, but is around the world, and so a nice sort of real-world experience with this uh, mitral clip. Yeah, it was certainly very encouraging that uh, th this very large experience was positive with the mitral clip and, and does confirm the results uh, in, in the United States. It, it, again, there's an emerging trend of devices uh, undergoing very careful randomized clinical trials in the United States uh, with a, a prolonged period prior to approval, whereas they're available in Europe and they gather enormous uh, amounts of data, such as the mitral clip. So no control group, no comparison, but some some uh, pretty impressive results in terms of exertional capacity, uh, left ventricular function, reduction of mitral regurg, uh, uh, can all be placebo. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Well, another registry is actually four registries put together. The, uh, the FAST MI uh, program looked at every five year uh, looks at uh, management of ST elevation MI and showing very favorable trends, I think, on number one, mortality come crashing down uh, over this 15-year period starting in 1995. What, what had been your sense of this uh, overview? Yeah, well, th th there's no question that the mortality rate from STEMI in France came way down, but disturbingly, uh, only about three quarters of that mortality benefit was due to re reperfusion, uh, PCI. About 25% of it was due to the uh, to so-called patient characteristics, but not necessarily favorable in that the patients tended to be younger and, and healthier, so they survived better. But it's a little bit disturbing that younger patients were having acute MIs, mostly females, and a lot related to smoking. Yeah. You know, of the trends, they looked at the relative uh, use of primary PCI versus thrombolysis. Uh, there it was 62% or so, I think, primary PCI down to 14% thrombolysis in Europe. So that trend is really uh, very strongly favoring uh, the interventions. Nicely, the percentage of people who got reperfusion went up, and so it was only about half the patients back in 95 who got reperfusion, and that's down to uh, just 30% getting uh, unreperfused, 25 to 30%. And so I think a, a very important uh, metric of getting reperfusion to patients and that driving benefit overall. Uh, absolutely, and, and the patients got it sooner, so their door-to-balloon times went down. Uh, they talked about cultural changes, the fact that people now are becoming more attuned to acting rapidly upon symptoms and to calling the, uh, 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 the uh, emergency vehicles rather than getting themselves to the hospital. So uh, the last... Uh, uh, study in the late-breaking session uh, was the so-called GRACE study uh, that was actually a sub-study of the ORIGIN uh, study that looked at the role of long-acting uh, insulin, uh, glargine insulin, uh, and uh, at omega-3 fatty acids uh, in, in preventing atherosclerosis, atherosclerotic events, in, in diabetics and, and patients with high risk. And, and the origin study, of course, was negative. And this was a sub-study looking at uh, carotid intimal medial thickening. And even though the insulin uh, arm 
uh, showed a trend toward a benefit wasn't statistically significant, the uh, omega-3s were totally neutral. You know, it's, it's nice to have imaging as a sub-study within a large clinical trial to try and understand it. It's then hard if, if both of the components are negative clinically and, and similarly not showing much on atherosclerosis. I guess some concordance in theory of, of those two. Um, I have to say the omega-3 fatty acid being totally negative in a six-year study uh, is of interest because there were two other prior ones, Jealous and Gisi Prevencione, showing benefit in, in prevention. This was isolated to diabetics who have a lot of other drivers of their atherosclerosis. Um, but a bit of a dampening on the omega-3 fatty acid story. Yeah. Fortunately, there is another trial ongoing in a broader population, so we'll see more on that. Yeah, the, the, the literature really has been conflicted on the omega-3 fatty acids. I'm going to continue to take them myself, even, uh, even though I don't like the fishy aftertaste, and hopefully I'm doing some good. So uh, very interesting trials here in Munich. Uh, uh, thanks for being with us. <laughs>